Okay. Well, I think we're just going to start, and we'll see what happens with the video. Um, we had this whole strategy. We have this great photo core team that's been taking pictures all weekend long. And we arranged this great photo montage of everything that was happening. And we we're going to play it to you as you came in. And then we were going to have this great number one and two winning teams uh, entries for the uh, TD Francis Film Festival uh, contest. <clears throat> and as you've seen, we still don't have the screens working. <laughs> Woo! Hang on. We're getting ready to. Excellent. Hang on, we're getting ready to turn them off again. <laughs> so, instead, I, this looks like we're going to release all of the photos from the photo core. We do that every year. We'll release all the photos and we'll have all the winning uh, and all the runners up to the film contest. We'll put them all online, we'll tweet it, it'll be on our YouTube and everything. And I just apologize to those teams and contests that we didn't get this working in time. So. Uh, in the name of efficiency, we're going to jump right into this. And one of them is, thank you for attending Rise of the Machines DEF CON 24. Thank you. So some of you might have noticed there was a slight badge uh, screw up. And we tried as hard as we could to substitute back the paper badges with the uh, real badges. And I'm not going to get into all the minutia but I'll just suffice to say, I tweeted uh, that it started with a typhoon off of Taiwan. And it truly was like one of these butterfly effects. So if we can't do it in Taiwan, we'll do it in the States. But if we're doing it in the States, they have different inventory. So then we have to use different components. But then we have to redesign the board. But then we have to redesign the PCB. But then we have to... Re and it cascaded and cascaded and cascaded from this one uh, Mother Nature event. And it just got crazier and crazier. So. We really apologize about that. We did our best to get you whatever we had in stock, whatever we could get from our supplier. Um, but I think uh, it was Russ observed that really the machines did launch the first attack here because, as we all know, uh, the machines control the weather, <laughs> just like the Illuminati party, which uh, controls the world. Some of you have not noticed that there is an Illumina Illuminati party, and they held up an event the other night. Um, I was not invited, but I'm working on joining the Illuminati because what I want to do is I want to create an Illuminati within the Illuminati <laughs> because while they're busy controlling us, I think we can maybe control them. And then they'll suffer the same paranoia that we have. It'll be kind of circular. It'll be fantastic. So this uh, badge problem meant that all the badges arrived on site, or the majority of them, and our teams, over 50 people, we stayed up in shifts for over 48 hours building all of the badges with custom uh, programmers. Uh, everybody ran out. It was, the, it was the coolest thing in hacker culture is that everybody wants to solve the problem. And so they were building these custom jigs with gear that they bought at the hardware store. Um, and it was simultaneous burnout and exhilaration, and it was like controlled chaos, and we've got this. And people were exhausted, and then I heard them talking, they're like, yeah, but we've got stories for a couple of years. And so that was the total hacker mindset. Uh, and in the end, you got these uh, beautiful badges, and later on, Lost is going to tell you a little bit about what's going on uh, behind them. But it was a really a great example of us pulling together. You notice my voice is a little shot, um, but I'm going to get through this with the help of some corona in a minute. <laughs> now, another thing you might have noticed is over the years, we always kind of screw up when we forget a department because we have so many teams. We have over 300 people helping put on this show. Um, and that's just the people we know of. There's a lot of people that jump in and fill gaps and friends of friends that do things. And that's not even counting all the contests with the people helping them. Um, so there's hundreds and hundreds of people making this event happen. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to name all the departments that we have and thank them. And I'd like you to give them a round of applause as well. I'm going to start off with the administration team. Yep. If we've got the administration team, just wave your hand. Got Arts and Entertainment that gave us Berlin Information Society, all the great DJs. Yep. Everybody wants to join their team now. Uh, we have the artwork team. Mar, Neil, all the external artists, badges. We have all the contests, villages, and events, which is a huge team that make all of the interaction possible. 
Woo! <laughs> um, you might have noticed last year we started this Demo Labs and it really grew in popularity. So let's hear it for Demo Labs, second year. <laughs> keeping, the, keeping everybody uh, tied in is our dispatch and radio team. We deploy over about 100 radios and run, we have all these FCC licenses, we run our own repeaters and a whole information uh, network on our radio network. We've got the DEF CON groups team, fronted by the awkward hug master, Jason Street. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> he will give every one of you a hug later. Um, we have the forums that we use year round. Cotman is a great administrator of that. We've got the info booth team, trying to help you get to where you're going. Inhuman registration for all the people that aren't human, right, the cyborgs. We have the, uh, the NOC the, and the DC TV team doing all the infrastructure networking. They had a rough time with an in-room TV. And it was one thing, our community is so awesome because you never have to wonder if there's a problem. They'll let you know. Um, and so another interesting thing is they immediately want to help. So all of a sudden, 10 people will show up. I think it's the video cable. No, it might be the video switcher. I know I think it's the encoding. Well, have you checked the... So we had a lot of help trying to figure out what was going on with the infrastructure and DCTV. Um, and in the end, we got it working. But nope, it worked last year, and something changed. Um, we have the press team that tries to get attention to everything that we do and draw attention to the speakers so the rest of the world wants to come and check out what we're doing and try to give an accurate portrayal of what it is that we do. That was the press team. <laughs> we have the on-site production team, and production are the people that are making sure that all the things with the hotel are happening. You know, the waters, the bars showing up, the projectors are on at the right time, the televisions are working in the rooms. We've got all the contracts, and you know, anyway, production is like the hand behind the scene making sure that everything is running smoothly. Quartermasters, major malfunctions team. I don't know how many tons of gear, but we're up to multiple semi-trailers just for us, not e including everybody else. I mean, we're moving probably 40 tons of stuff. And they're probably still moving it right now. And they're now. moving it right now. That's maybe why they're not here. We have the human registration team handling that line for you guys in record time. Yeah. We've noticed this, this trend where we get better at scaling registration. We open it earlier and we keep increasing the size. And then you guys just fucking keep showing up earlier. <laughs> so at some point, we're going to have to scale like 500 stations and we'll do it in three minutes or something. So, I mean, that's the logical conclusion of where we're going. Uh, use the cloud. <laughs> uh, um, so for those of you, how many of you went to uh, speeches and how many of you uh, enjoyed what you saw? So we get hundreds and hundreds of submissions. Hundreds probably, I don't know, Nikita, how many did we get? Over 600 submissions um, that we had to boil down. And because of this awesome contest behind us, we did away with one of our speaking tracks. So we had more submissions and less space. And that's a really difficult spot to be in. And luckily, we have a really incredible uh, CFP review team. And you might have seen them. They had special badges this year. It's the first year they get their own badges because it's really important um, that we acknowledge their commitment and the time they put in. And they had one superpower. If they, you had a review badge, you could cut in line to go to see the speeches. And that was it. Because we wanted our reviewers to be able to see the talks and then help provide feedback after the fact. And then we provide that feedback back to the speakers. And we were one of the first conferences, I don't know if we're the only one, where we provide all the positive and negative feedback to all 600 plus submissions, which is an insane amount of work. But the speakers are putting in an insane amount of work to come here. And so we need to acknowledge um, their effort as well. So that's just, I think, part of what we need to do. Um, now, it was really lucky for us this year. So the SOC team, 
you see helping make uh, herd the cats and make everything happen. Uh, CJ leads the sock team. This year, we had a record number of attendees. Um, people keep asking you, and I'll keep asking me, and I'll say, we plan for 10 to 12 percent growth because those are the numbers we were getting from Black Hat. Since we don't do pre-registration, we have no idea how many people are going to be here. But we do know how many people are buying badges for DEF CON at Black Hat, and we know how big if Black Hat's growing. So then we just guess, um, and that's and what we're we really on. good at it. Yeah. yeah, we're really good, and we have to guess like three or four months in advance for badges. Right. So anyway, we were thinking 12 or so percent, and we grew. We made 22,000 lanyards and 20,000 badges, and we ran out of lanyards. So. That was a huge show for us this year. And talking to attendees, it actually didn't feel like a 20% growth. It, I don't know what happened, but it felt a lot maybe more chill than that. So yeah, emergency stanchions worked. Yeah. So anyway, let's give a big round of applause to the SOC for really helping that happen this year. Yeah, CJ's hiding off to the side here. So if you could raise your hand so everyone can give you a virtual CJ's hug. CJ's over here. Woo. Thank you, guys. CJ and Tacitus, the number one, number two. Anyway, great work this year from the SOC. Social media team, uh, we have uh, three or four people that help out, but it's primarily fronted by Darrington and Neil, um, and then myself when I jump in. And we're really trying to stay on top of what people are saying in the community and respond as fast as we can. Um, Cotman does a lot of uh, pointing social media stuff in our direction. Uh, so I really want to call out social media. Uh, speaker operations for making sure the speakers get there on time and have their first shot of whiskey. It's really important. And finally, we're down to our vendor swag team, trying to get all the right swag, trying to sell it as fast as we possibly can. And again, it was a crazy year for us. We plan on, based on last year, how we were planning to sell out and what sizes. Things that we were supposed to sell out on Saturday sold out halfway through Thursday. We ordered 2,000 more shirts overnight and they sold out in four hours the next day. And so it was just unbelievable the amount of activity this year. Just never seen anything like it. I think we had people, we're estimating based on Black Hat, people from almost 50 countries here. So it was incredible. <laughs> Let's see, is anybody here, anybody here not from Canada or the United States, raise your hand. Look around. Wow, incredible. And finally, I'd like to call out the workshop team. Workshop started out last year as kind of an idea with Nikita, uh, and we, it worked out pretty well last year. So this year, we had more space. Let's just grow it. And it went from kind of a small thing into something huge that caught us off guard and overwhelmed us. So next year, we're going to be ready for workshops. So I apologize for any of the problems, victim of our own success. But next year, we're going to continue workshops, and we're going to try to manage it a lot better. So thank you uh, for the people who endured the workshops. So what we're going to do now, if we're going to go to our first department, we give you some statistics. The network team is going to come up on stage, uh, Luis, if he's around. And we're going to see what just happened on the supposedly the world's most dangerous network. Because I don't know if that's true or not. Luis? Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Hello, DEFCON. So I'm going to make this quick. Do we have a timer? Well, you boot me off if I'm... OK. Just do it live. So I'm going to talk real quick about the NOC. This part of the NOC review slides are already available on defconnetworking.org. So let's get to this. For who's first time DEFCONers here? First, your first time at DEFCON? OK. It's a whole bunch of people. So in the case you don't know, we do pretty much all the networking for everything that makes this work in the convention space. Uh, all the wired stuff is there, DCTV. We're going to talk more about the CTV on the issues that we had real quick. And wireless. One new thing for wireless this year is that OpenCTF played through one of the SSIDs that we had. And they got double of the amount of attendees of participants they had, so I think it helped out a lot. Uh, we have a 10 gig backbone. 
And we started with our basic 125, uh, 125 megabits per second uplink, and then we maxed that out, thanks to the new people that showed up, and then we bumped that up to 175. That didn't work. 200 was, thanks Jeff, thanks Cheryl. Um, and that kind of helped, it helped a lot with several things. What is it? Oh yeah, I'll get that into the issues that were resolved. <laughs> uh, they wired, so everybody asks what we use for gear, so you can go through this, through the slides. Um, and the CTV, we have five channels on each, on both, both of the, the hotels. Uh, five Raspberry Pis for each. And a video transcoding provided by so source of knowledge. And uh, there's a video in the NOC that partially solved the problem. And then um, there are a couple more things that actually help solve the problem. So the CTV, we switched this year. Yeah, we made changes, right, to try to make it better. So the CTV, we turned HD uh, for the broadcast, which made it look good when it worked. And it worked for most of the time. When we tested before you guys got here and hogged our, our internet link, it worked really well. But um, again, we'll do it live, right? And one thing new that we did in regards to DCTV is the internet streams. So we stream CGC, DC 101, and this is being broadcast live to the internet for the first time. Thanks, Jeff. So this is kind of the timeline. One of the changes that we had last year uh, was to have, because of the thing behind me here, the shiny things, the awesome things here, they, we had to show up a, few, a day early, basically, to, uh, to uh, Mac and Video Man. They, show up, they showed up one day early, and being here one day early really helped a lot. So usually we start working on Monday. This year we had the internet running on Sunday, so on Monday we could hit the ground and get things working. And Thursday was kind of a hold-off day for us. What was ready was ready. What wasn't ready, we couldn't do much. And Friday, 6 a.m., that's when we had this room, this big room here. That's when we put everything together. So thanks for the, for the team for, for waking up very early for doing this. <laughs> and Saturday, we worked through the DCTV issues along with Friday. And I'm going to cover that on the next slide. And we leave tomorrow, hopefully. Can't stay here anymore. The issues, bandwidth. Thanks for more of you using the network and trusting somehow the network with your, with your mobile devices or your burners, what have you. So we had way more users than we had in the past. And we had some AP coverage, some spotty uh, locations, and we worked through that. And DCTV started with the bandwidth. Uh, we were doing some, some of the stuff we were doing uh, on the internet and traffic had to go back. So then we switched to have a local server here that helped a lot and we thought it was gonna solve the problems but then we ran into other things. So what we did, we turned down the resolution and then we also switched from RTSP to RTMP and that have seemed to resolve most of the problems. And this is everything else I'm gonna just, walk, just run by, but this is what usually people like to see. You guys transfers, transferred 4.3 terabytes of data throughout the four or five days. That's more than double the last year. And we had about 10, 000, uh, 35,000 unique DHCP leases. Doesn't mean much, because you can fake MAC addresses and all that stuff, but the numbers are there and you, we transferred a whole bunch of of data, so thanks for using the network. These are the top 10 wireless chipsets used. You can go through this again later. And this is the team, shout out for the, for the awesome NOC team here. I'm Effen, I run this. Uh, Mac is my number two, but he does most of the work, actually. Um, I do a lot of the planning. Uh, there's the old guys here, Sparky, Video Man, they've been with us forever. And we have like the solid team with um, Justin, Booger, uh, Call Me Bastard, Plan B, and, and Colin. They took wireless and they did, they did awesome things this year. Worked really well. I dumped that on them and it was great. Serif helps Video Man with the video stuff. And we had two noobs, 
uh, one gave up and already left. I'm kidding. He had to leave today. And C75 also jumped in and helped. Other than the team, thanks to DT, Russ, Sherelle, Caesars, Caesars IT is absolutely awesome with us, along with Encore. Without them, we cannot get things done in time. And source of knowledge, uh, and the, the folks that brings, brings us some snacks every year, they showed up too. And thanks to you for trying to be nice with us and to each other. Thank you. All right, so um, as you know, every year there are multiple contests or events, the villages, different things happen where folks are raising money for different charities around DEF CON. So uh, this slide, I don't want to just read it all to you, uh, but I just wanted to put these numbers up and say, you know, you guys are incredible. Like every year uh, there are more and more of you that are getting together and trying to find ways to help support um, organizations that you're passionate about and it shows. Um, so thank you to everybody, um, you know, that Hack Fortress, Mohawk Con, uh, Darknet, Rapid7, uh, and everybody who came together uh, for Hackers for Charity. Johnny couldn't be here and a bunch of people got together and stepped up and really helped out. So um, like I said, I'm not going to read you a bunch of numbers, but there they are. Good job, guys. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm just going to stay here. That's what I do. Uh, so I'm Grifter. Pleasure to meet you. Um, Hi, Grifter. Thanks. Nice to meet you, sir. Um, so I'm the department lead for contests, events, villages, parties, and the demo labs. So pretty much the content that isn't review board selected or the workshops, that is our department. I do that with Panadero um, and a whole team of other goons. Uh, there are 20 of us total who are managing 135,000 square feet of DEF CON, so quite a bit. So if, uh, if you enjoyed doing things that weren't sitting in talks, you know, stick with our mantra, not one talk, not ever. So, um, so yeah, there are no talks at DEF CON. I, DEF CON was canceled. We're not <laughs> sure why you're here. <laughs> um, but legitimately, like, we, um, we, we have an insane amount of content. And I just wanted to give a huge, huge thanks to all of the contest organizers. You can see this insane number of contests that are up there. They spend um, dozens of hours, dozens, no, more like hundreds of hours on some of these contests. Uh, a significant amount of money in some cases, and they really, really pour their hearts into it. So um, we love them. I mean, honestly, if you guys are interested in putting on a contest, we're always looking for new stuff. Please hit me up at grifter at defcon.org, and uh, and we'll we'll get it done. Not like tomorrow. Like relax. Um, probably like January. I'll I'll finally wake up then. Villages. How many people hung out in a village? So, uh, so the villages, I, I want to give a little credit here. So the villages were actually born at the Riv at DEF CON 14. Um, we said, hey, we have these sky boxes. We need something to do with them. If you provide content for it, we'll let you like, just chill in them and hang out them at night and maybe throw a party and do whatever. And so the first village was created by a tool, the lockpick village. So you, I think, yeah, shout, shout out to tool. Um, they came and said, hey, we want to do this thing, we'll have talks, we'll set up tables, we'll teach people, we'll do all this stuff. And that has become a hacker con standard. So again, thank you, Tool. It's awesome. Now, at DEF CON, we have 10. You can see them all there. Again, not going to read them all. There they are. Um, but everybody um, who got to hang out in the village, it's, they're fantastic. We love you guys. Uh, keep at it. Events. So. You know, things like the shoot or um, Drone Club. Drone Club's awesome. They're newer. They were here last year. We kind of had them tucked a little bit in a corner. This year we put them up on the 26th floor and they were like flying drones at each other and like it was like pop the balloon and get past the phantom and they had little drones attacking larger drones. It was awesome. Um, and we have our, you know, our, our 
events that, are, that always come back, things like Mohawk Con and, and Hacker Karaoke, things that are DEF CON staples. And so, you know, thank you again to all these events that provide something for us to do um, when we're stumbling around the hallways or, you know, it's two in the morning and you're just trying to never sleep. Lost. You're up. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Weird being up on stage for the opening and then the closing. I feel like a bookend. <laughs> Welcome to uh, to the closing ceremonies and thank There's you for all the kind there words. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny to me. That's all that matters, right? So uh, some of you may have noticed the uh, the wonderful badges that uh, that Jeff and I are, are, are currently wearing and that uh, the winners of the uh, Uber badge will be receiving. Um, we'd be amiss if we didn't call out a few people who had a, a hand in this, or really the only hands in this. And uh, Rick Gallison, if you could stand up. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, uh, Rick is a professional uh, special effects artist in Hollywood, and you may have seen his work. Correct me if I'm wrong, the mechanism that drives these is the same mechanism that was in the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park for the spitters. Is that correct? The tongue. So he's done dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. He's done Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, he's top notch. And these badges would not have happened without him. Um, I had some crazy ideas, but the execution is, was Rick. And in, in addition to that, we had John McFailin. John, could you stand up? Some of you may recognize John. He was our, our, our actor that we embedded in the, in the crowd to do dead drops the year that we had a secret agent as part of the game. Um, but one more time, can we just give a hand to everybody that was involved? Oh, and, and his son Justin also. Uh, Justin, stand up. Helped with the assembly. So... Uh, this is probably the most complex badge that, that we've ever done for an Uber. Um, many of you have seen that we've had forgeries of the, the radioactive badges with the nuclear isotopes, uh, which I loved, by the way, and I loved that I had multiples. And my favorite, and I'm sorry to the guys that put all the work in, my favorite has to be the guy that brought one that was half as big as it needed to be because all he had to work with was a picture and he had no scale. So... <laughs> I just, I think that's phenomenal. So give that guy a hand. So uh, for, for what we've been waiting for, the Council of Nine, who are the winners of this year's badge contest, could you come up here, please? Guys, give a hand. For those unaware, this is probably one of the most grueling competitions at DEF CON. When you have CTF or you have a single focus, um, it's pretty easy if you know what your objective is. In the badge contest, much like the mystery challenge, they don't even know what they have to do half the time. So a lot of the challenge is like hacking out on the internet where you've got a signal and noise and you have to figure out what's important and what isn't. And these guys uh, start working on the competition actually before DEF CON, even when it's not supposed to be running. <laughs> And I do apologize for the cron jobs that may be changing my page sizes so that you guys can't uh, tell when I change things. I want to give at least one of you, what, 30 seconds, Jeff, or something like that to say? So can we have one, somebody from the team come up and talk about your experience? Sure, sure. Um, we actually wanted to take this 30 seconds to really thank Lost and his team for all that they do for DEF CON and that it's largely through their efforts that the hacker spirit is still alive at DEF CON. And that's really what we wanted to say. We wanted to thank you. So with the exception of the CTF guys, um, due to the complexity of these, we're actually going to ship them to the winner's registered mail. Um, that's why you don't see them walking off the stage with Uber badges. For those of you who don't know, these take well over 10 hours to just assemble uh, a single badge. And every part in these is, is custom design. So we thought it was worth it because we have to hand tune every one of them. And then with the traveling here, we didn't have the resources to get all of them tuned 
in time because there are, are well, really only one person, Rick, who can do that hand tuning. And we want to give them something that this is on par. This is like taking home a movie prop from Hollywood. So anyway. Can you show them what it does? Thank you. So for those who haven't seen it, So we'll cycle through. I don't know if you guys can see this. Where? Which way? Sideways. Sideways. Okay, hold on, wait for it. One more time. These are the, the angry eyes when it, it gets mad at you for pushing the button. <laughs> yeah. I also made an announcement in opening ceremonies and I reiterate that uh, Mystery Challenge may be coming back one last time. <laughs> Thank you. All right, next up, Social Engineering CTF. So this is our seventh year running this Social Engineering Village. You guys were ridiculous. You had lines out to the casino. You were getting yelled at by the hotel every day. So thank you for that. Um, this is a really fantastic year. We chose as our targets uh, security companies. So um, companies you know, like RSA and, and SecureWorks and others. We had a really, really good competition. Tons of um, people signed up for it. But we have um, our, I'm not gonna use your whole name, right? So we got Rachel as our second place winner. Um, she taught, it was, this is her first time, and, and actually only second time at DEF CON. She came last year, learned what social engineering was, signed up for the CTF, made a very psychotic video proving that she deserved to be here. It was really scary, we should show it actually. And then um, came and, and took second place, just totally owned it really, only about a hundred point difference from our first place winner. So give her a round of applause. Okay, we got a bunch of stuff. something really cool this year. I don't know if you're going to get to see it. I'm not sure if they can zoom in on it or what, but we made this really awesome trophy for the first place winner. It's the social engineering head. It's, yeah, it's really awesome. And uh, Mr. Silvers got on stage and I had never seen anything like it in my life. Every flag that could be obtained in one call. And then he did it again <laughs> in a second call. So totally ridiculous. Really awesome job. Awesome job. And he's getting like the coolest black badge ever. I mean, that thing's awesome. Really great. So um, how much time do I have left? A couple seconds? I just want to thank Grifter and his team. They were totally phenomenal this, this year, like they are every year. But I don't know about the other villages, but they were always checking in, making sure things were great. I thought we had a, a really phenomenal year this year at DEF CON. So I can't wait till next year. We'll see you guys then. Thanks. Love you guys. That's a bold move, Cotton. <laughs> Let's see how it plays out. So uh, next up, this one was really cool. If you guys didn't see this contest in the uh, IoT Village, um, you're missing out. Make sure you get in there next year, uh, up, up next, so hopelessly broken. Well, you know what's up. Hey guys, so, so Hopelessly Broken is a two-part contest in the IoT Village. The first one is a really cool zero-day competition and we had a very busy weekend and we had 45 security issues uh, presented to us and found in numerous IoT devices like a certain refrigerator that was in our device, not that exact one, but similar. 
some smart locks, routers, thermostats, and even a wheelchair. Not sure if you saw the personless wheelchair flying around the halls, but that was being remotely controlled through a hack. So that was pretty awesome. We're going to be going over all the issues that were found and determining what O-Days are so winners will be contacted. And I'm going to pass it over to Sam and Jake, who are going to, is going to talk about our Black Badge Contest, which are totally stoked to be Black Badge Contest this year. So thanks for nominating us, whoever did that. We really appreciate it. All right, so we had a crazy turnout this year with over 50 teams. I mean, that's a really big turnout compared to the last two years we've been doing this. Um, almost 200%. <laughs> <laughs> almost 200%. Um, and then uh, for second and third, it came down to a uh, tiebreaker. Um, they uh, had to compete uh, at a sudden death challenge to take over a router. And uh, congratulations to both the second and third place teams. It was really impressive. Uh, they got that one point, put them over the edge. For our first place team, who is on stage with us receiving the black badge, they, um, you know, they've been actually coming to the challenge for the past two years. Um, one of the members has competed both times and has been part of the first place team, and that is Team Eversec. I'll keep it short and sweet. Uh, thanks to everyone who made DEF CON possible. It's uh, my third time being here, and uh, I love it. Uh, thanks to everyone who made the Internet of Things Village possible. Y'all are great. Please keep it up. And, you know, I'm not special. If you guys think this sounds really cool, please come next year and compete because you guys can do just as well or better as we can. So thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, next black bag, badge, black bag, that's badge contest. Wait, let's see how that shows up on the screen. You guys are on it, I like it. So uh, next up, capture the packet. That's a bold move, Cotton. Timer, I have like what 30 hours? Is that oh, right? okay? <laughs> so, so uh, we, we put together the uh, packet hacking village, and this year we have um, knocked it out of the park with our uh, black badge event, capture the packet. We have this team of gentlemen here, they've been, competed five years in a row, and uh, what they had to do oh my. Um, Pick apart some of the, uh, the worst malware you can find from pretty much every bad country that's out there, including our own. Um, steganography that has never been seen before, all sorts of ridiculous puzzles and, and uh, things within network traffic. Um, it was just a blast. And I uh, want to provide them, thanks to uh, um, Packet Sled, they donated some extra special prizes for each of them, so they each get a MacBook Pro. And uh, before I run off the stage, which I know we've got to hurry up. <laughs> Woot! <laughs> um, this year we threw together some, some new things. Um, we, we threw down the, uh, the um, Sheep City, where it's a, a, a full-on power grid little miniature city that you can hack and we had everything set up so you know you, what we've been saying is you, you can't spell idiot without IOT and uh, we threw it in there and we had uh, a little power meter, garage door openers, all sorts of things for people to come and hack on. We thank everybody that came out and did that and then uh, we want to thank all the attendees for um, keeping our honeypots busy because um, we really love trolling all of you. So thank you so much. Um, okay, so go ahead. Okay. Hi, I'm CDOX. Uh, I wanted to thank DEF CON for allowing us to host this village. Without DEF CON, this wouldn't be possible. I would want to thank all the goons, past and current, because they're what make uh, us have a safe place. And I especially want to thank our volunteers, because without them, uh, you guys wouldn't have the entertainment. And I really want to thank all the attendees for coming to our village on the 26th floor. We'll see you guys next year.
real quick. So, so he's not done. Yeah, sure. I'm not done. So just, just really quick, so the, the, there were a bunch of teams competing, and we had our uh, prelims, our, our semifinals and finals, and they were going back and forth. And it was down to the wire, and by 100 points, this team pulled it out. And they came all the way from the Philippines to play this game, and they spent their whole con just on this, and every year they've been doing that. And that's the dedication it takes to win a black badge. So give them an extra round of applause. Good job. That's a bold move, Cotton. All right, uh, next up, Darknet. All right, hello. Um, so before I turn it over to Zero to talk about some of the stats we had for Darknet, uh, I wanted to thank a couple people. One, uh, the person that started the Darknet, Smitty, uh, he started it for us. So thanks. Um, it, the game is actually based off a book named from uh, a, it's based off a book named The Damon from Daniel Suarez. Read it. Very good. Um, Want to thank all the people that played. They did an awesome job this year, and all our Uber agents that created some really awesome stuff. We had I'll let him speak to the stats, but we had 569, 570 total people play. It was awesome. What do they have to do? What do they have to do? So it's basically a big MMO. If you guys haven't played yet, play next year. It's basically a big MMO. You sign up, you get quests, you go off and learn how to solder, you learn how to solder and build a cool badge. Uh, you learn how to uh, speak in sign language, you learn uh, lock picking. Lock picking. Uh, no one got to see people in thongs this year, so that was at least a little bit better. Um, the other person I want to quickly thank is Crux. He's the one that actually designed the board this year. He did an awesome job. In our game this year, we did have uh, 50, 569 players who completed or run over 5,600 challenges in the game. It was amazing. Um, wanted to give special thanks to our, our players, um, our winners. We also had a lot of team play, which is what we encourage. We're trying to get people to work together to learn things and teach each other. Team 80 between, awesome job, guys. You guys came up really high in the scoreboard. It was, it was amazing. Um, yeah. That's it. Introduce our, introduce our winner. Oh, hi there. He's our winner from the, for this year. Uh, he scored 670 points about. Very good job. Congratulations. All right. Hi. I want to thank everyone who made DEF CON possible, and especially I want to thank the DC Darknet team, because it's, it's you guys who made me feel like a part of this community. Thank you. All right, uh, the next up is the Wireless Village had the wireless CTF going on up there. I don't know if you guys checked it out. Again, this is another um, one of the contests that really they stepped it up this year. They put a lot of smaller things together and made an incredible, incredible show. So here they are, wireless CTF. That small. Hey, that's a bold move, Cotton. So first of all, thank you, DEF CON. We've, uh, we're one of the longest running villages along with the Lockpick and some of the other groups. We really appreciate the support we get every year. We fill the room, thanks to you guys. Um, we try and bring out this new thing. It's, it's kind of neat, it's called wireless. Um, I think you guys call it IoT and some other things nowadays, but it's still all insecure wireless, so we play with it quite a bit. Um, we had over 100 challenges this year, thanks to a whole lot of creative folks that have been working all year on this. We had a fully running um, SCADA system that was attacked by wireless, and then you could run through an entire control system. Um, we had 32 teams of 63 people that scored. Those aren't the people that were actually in the room playing. Those are the people that actually scored. The winning team was able to find Fox and a Hound over 72 megahertz wireless, or I'm um, sorry, 72 megahertz um, signal. They found a Fox with Bluetooth low energy and three different 2.4 gigahertz Foxes. 
Uh, we had almost 100% uptime with our network. Um, we saw when DEF CON went down and we went down with them, but other than that, we, we ran really, really solid for three full days of people beating the crap out of us over Wi-Fi. Um, thanks, uh, great job Raging Security, they're the team that won. Bring them up in a second. Um, and because of the sponsors that we get every year, because you guys fill our room, Aruba, Edis, Hack5, Mitre, PI Achievers, Great Scott Gadgets, and Pony Express, the winning team got almost $3,000 in prizes. So, Raging Security. Uh, first off, I want to thank my team. Uh, they were great. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be here. Uh, I also want to thank the guys at the Wireless Village. They put some amazing puzzles out there for us to solve and figure out. Every time we, we, every time we do the contest, we learn something new. They always like to throw a curveball at us. Uh, I also want to thank our families for letting us come to Vegas and you know, have some time away from the family and the kids and, and everything. Uh, and I want to you know, thank the, the community at large for you know, having such an awesome conference. That's a bold move, Cotton. Uh, so, uh, next up is going to be the guys uh, who did the Car Hacking Village CTF. If you guys, who went into the Car Hacking Village? That's right. It was awesome, right? <laughs> I'll let them tell you uh, what went into the CTF. It's pretty, pretty badass. Hello, I'm Robert. I'm with CAN Bus Hack. And I'd like to thank everybody who showed up to the Car Hacking Village and got, our, got your badge. Um, this year was our first year trying to do a, a contest. So this year we were asked if we could do a CTF. And I'm going to pass it over to Eric and let him talk a little bit about the CTS, T CTF. Thanks. So it's our honor to present the winners of the very first Car Hacking Village Capture the Flag contest. Wow, that was almost bad. Uh, we were really blown away by the level of participation and uh, competition in the contest. We had 60 people registered, and those leaderboards were back and forth all weekend long. So all those nightmares we had of throwing a CTF and not having anybody showed up turned out to be unfounded. But anyway. Ultimately, at the end of the day, first and second place were decided by 60-second uh, submission windows. So speed is really of the essence. So thanks again to Robert for hosting us and everybody who came down to see us. We really enjoyed it, and we hope you did too. And now, without further ado, the winners. Oh, the, the car hacking badge. Unfortunately, the battery's dead right now, so it, it, it plugs into the CAN bus. Yeah. And... and Maybe. The <laughs> Use the steering wheel to steal the car. <laughs> cool. So my name is Jason. I'm from Bug Crowd, and uh, we sponsored and ran operations as well as contrib contributed challenges. Uh, a couple people I want to thank before we get to the winners: uh, Bug Crowd, FCA, the Car Hackers Village, and uh, CTFD, which was the platform we ran the CTF on, um, and Dan for doing all the operations. He's awesome. Um, so, uh, without further ado, we had three winners. For, or third place is Acid Fingers, right here. Um, absolutely took the lead early on. Uh, we thought he was going to blow through everything, but just kind of lost out a little bit. Uh, and then we had Ramrod and MK, 60-minute submission window, which was crazy. Um, so Ramrod came in second, not here right now. And MK, these two right here. Um, never had a lot of car hacking experience before, so really awesome. It really says something about what we want to do. We want to get people into the car hacking world, and these two were new at it, and they killed it, and I'm so proud of everyone involved with this. And I thank DEF CON. Uh, we got some prizes. We got a drone for first, or a robot for first place. It's a $500 alpha robot. Uh, and the second and third place prizes uh, are drones, the uh, Discovery drones here. Uh, we'll ship this one to the winner. And then a black badge. So uh, congratulations to everyone. Thank you, DEF CON and Jeff and everybody. Thank you. So this year, we were really proud to host or provide the space for the first ever Cyber Grand Challenge. And so in our second to last black badge uh, contest, we would like to call up the uh, CGC folks and hear a little bit about what just happened and why it took $55 million to essentially assemble and execute the contest that uh, the machines that are behind us. So I'd like to bring up 
Mr. Walker, thank you so much. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Hello, DEF CON. My name is Mike Walker. I'm here from DARPA. Um, and Thursday, August 4th, 2016 is finally behind us. That date has been years in front of me for so long. And I can't tell you about the hundreds of people who worked with us uh, so that we could have the first all-machine hacking tournament execute here, co-located with DEF CON, and it, and it worked. So, uh, so uh, uh, yesterday, DEF CON asked if we could, uh, if we could talk about it uh, today at closing ceremony. So I, I sat up in my hotel room and uh, I wrote down some thoughts on, on what this all means. So I want to tell you about a battle between adversarial thinking machines held in the heat of August. The scene is the, the New York Hilton. The day is August, 34th, August 31st and the year is 1970. And the battle is the first United States computer chess championship held by the ACM. So the idea that computers that could play expert games was just beginning then. These primitive machines duked it out for days. A champion emerged named Chess 3.0 written in Fortran 4. Uh, so 46 years later, things are different. Some things stay the same. Computers are playing much harder games now. Uh, these machines behind me, they can play capture the flag. They can wrestle through pass uh, through software, sometimes infinite pass. Even simple software can, can process an infinite number of inputs. This is a, not a, a big board. It's something beyond that. Um, Head-to-head -head network security is a game of incomplete information. It's multi-opponent and deals with pass search problems that are provably impossible in the general case. And yet, these systems work. They are limited first-generation prototypes. And someday, somebody else is going to call them primitive. I will always remember them as the first of their kind. And as powerful as this capability is, here's what I think history has taught us about things that aren't going to change. First, I want to talk about the fourth place machine at that first all-computer chess tournament. It was built by a man named Hans Berliner. And Hans kept working on automating games. He built a backgammon game, uh, system named BKG 9.8 pioneered the use of fuzzy, fuzzy logic in gaming software. And in 1979, Hans watched as his creation became the first computer program to beat a human world champion in any game. Hans was a pioneer, and despite not ending up on the podium in 1970, he went on to change the world in his own right. I believe that when a challenge is used to pioneer new technology, it's sometimes just as important to look to the people as it is to look at the places. And I really look forward to seeing what happens with the community that, that built this game, that played in it, and what they build in the future. I think that's the most important thing that happened here. So second, I want to talk about the story of chess. And, and we all know this story, right? Uh, first, people were grandmasters, and then an AI named Deep Blue 2 defeated the world chess champion, and people were demoted to second place. Um, but today, if you defeat a grandmaster at chess, there's an app for that. Um, I, I wonder how many of you know the rest of the story, because that story isn't over. Uh, it turns out that chess is played at its highest level today, not by machines or by people, but by people and machines working together. And they call it centaur chess, and it's still going on in 2016. And, and that's, I, I hope, what you come away with from this today. What could automation and people do together? As partners, I think we can do something that neither one of us can do on our own. The idea is congruent with all the evidence we have. Expert systems, first-gen AI, whatever you want to call it, they're fast, they're scalable, they're powerful, they're brittle, they're fundamentally limited, and they're incapable of innovation. But when they partner with us, the combination can be amazing. And I want to read you a passage that I've become fond of. The hope is that in not too many years, human brains and computing machines will be coupled together very tightly, and that the resulting partnership will think as no human brain has ever thought and process data in a way not approached by the information handling machines that we know today. So that was written by J.C.R. Licklider in March of 1960, and two years later, he went on to run the DARPA office that I work for today. So with that, I want to play you some highlights from our competition on Thursday and introduce to you some of the teams um, that, that won. And I'm going to go search for videos. 
and Russ is going to help. So this is uh, the For All Secure System Mayhem, and we're going to bring For, for All Secure up here, uh, and you're going to see what a cyber reasoning system looks like. So this is uh, Mayhem producing uh, an input uh, that found a bug in a service that replicated MS08067, very famous flaw. Uh, now, we have learned since Thursday that the bug it found in this software uh, is actually an unintended bug that we didn't even know about. It was a different complex heat bug. Uh, which is pretty cool, you know, for a bot. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me, cyber reasoning system. Here it is. Um, so congratulations to Mayhem. Mayhem is our first place winner. They take to home $2 million. Well done, gentlemen. Second system is Xandra, built by TechX. Um, this is our second place team. They are taking home $1 million. Come up on stage, everybody. Um, and what you're seeing is two traces here, one in our patched binary, one in, in our vulnerable binary. And the Xandra system found something that it, could, uh, that it could capture flags against both. It found an unintended bug that we didn't even know about in a service called OTP SIM, uh, all on its own. Congratulations to TechX, second place winners. And I, I have to say something before I bring our third place team up, because on Thursday night, uh, we, we uh, started verifying scoring, and we were unable to verify third place until late last night. And uh, we were actually able to notify our third place team this morning that they won third place. And that means that they have not yet had the opportunity to come up in front of a crowd as the official third place winner of Cyber Grand Challenge. So I, I actually have one more request uh, for this community, and that is, can, can you please make this room shake for shellfish? So this is an, an input into previously unknown code created by the mechanical fish system right back there, built by shellfish behind me. Uh, and it's traversing an input into a famous bug in SendMail from 2005 called CrackAdder, only it's a new version of CrackAdder that was rebuilt. But, uh, but still pretty cool, um, and I think Halvor is going to post on it when he lands. Uh, he's reading it on the airplane. So uh, in closing, I want to say thank you to this community uh, for, for, for letting us find common ground with you and build this uh, contest here. Thank you to everyone who participated. Thank you to the hundreds of team, uh, people who helped build this liquid cool data center in here and all the software inside it. Thank you so much. So, so what we're trying to do here is, in a surprise move, um, this has never happened before, but we're granting the winning machine, Mayhem, a black badge. <laughs> Not the team, the machine. Um, and we're just wondering what the machine would have to say about this if it had an ability to speak, sort of like Colossus. But um, in lieu of the machine, the closest person that might know what's going on in the mind of the machine, I would love to see if somebody from Team Mayhem has a couple of words to say about what it's like to have their creation uh, win the highest honor that we can bestow here at DEF CON. Now, it's a lifetime... Uh, admittance to DEF CON, but we don't expect to see uh, supercomputers showing up every year. Uh, but it is going in, uh, I understand, the Smithsonian Museum. So it would be really cool to see one of the robotic Rise of the Machines badges in the Smithsonian. Uh, let's see if we can get somebody up here. Tyler. Tyler. Sure. And you don't even have to speak like a computer. You can speak like a human. Well, I'm not the computer, of course. That was someone else. Um, but thank you to, to DARPA for, for organizing the Cyber Grand Challenge and uh, letting our team for All Secure participate. It's been an incredible two-year journey to this. Um, and thank you to DT and everyone at DEF CON for 
for allowing uh, this to happen at DEF CON because we'd be here anyway every year. So we're glad we didn't have to do two things. Um, and yeah, thank you everyone. Um, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Don't kill all humans, that's bad. All right, gotta get back to the slides here. I did nothing. I'm getting it. What you? My yeah, tech support. He, he told me to get up here and fix it for you. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> stay up here. Right? Just, just like I fixed the video system earlier, right? That's good. You're a good man, wise and true. Uh, so the next contest uh, doesn't really need an introduction, but I just want to say, from a um, from an organizer standpoint, from a, a goon standpoint. Uh, this this contest brings a lot of energy and a lot of excitement to our area. So uh, the music is going. There's always like crowds around uh, the folks at the tables, and we absolutely uh, love having them there and having having them there with us. That the last five minutes when the final countdown starts is super high energy, and uh, like I said, I mean they're just the best. Capture the flag. Good evening. I'm Vito at Legitimate Business Syndicate. One year ago, we announced the platform for DEF CON Capture the Flag would be the DARPA Decree System. As of this weekend, we are pleased to announce the successful completion of the first human versus computer reverse engineering and exploitation Capture the Flag. We would like to thank all of our competitors for playing with honor, skill, and forgiveness for our operational issues at the game start. We give huge thanks to DEF CON goons for keeping our room focused and friendly, to the Cyber Grand Challenge winner, Mayhem, for being willing to pit their computer against the most ruthless human hackers in the world, and to the Capture the Flag community worldwide for being part of this historic event. Hi, everybody. I'm Gynophage with the Legitimate Business Syndicate. I'd once again like to thank everyone involved for their grace and patience when dealing with our issues. I would also like to thank the giants on the stage with me. Without their shoulders to stand on, this game could not happen. <laughs> Two years ago, DARPA presented a challenge that many people in this room scoffed at. Build a computer that could compete with the best hackers in the world. I am proud to announce that they have succeeded. At many points this weekend, an autonomous si computer system was beating some of our teams. The raw scores for all the teams will be available in the coming weeks, as well as the exploits, patches, and firewall rules that all of our teams created. I am now proud to announce the top t three teams of our Capture the Flag. In third place, we had DEFCOR, last year's champions from Korea. In second place, we had Bloops, a combination of Blue Lotus and Oops. And finally, I am proud to present to the pretty potent poners of the Plaid Parliament of Poning, the first place prize, eight black badges. Come up, PPP. So the winners of the CTF get these handcrafted black badges, and we'll have to describe to them. Well, actually, they're so smart, they'll just figure out how it all works. Um, and then something special that only CTF winners get is we get a leather jacket that's embroidered with our logo and nobody else, they're never for sale, we never make them for anything else, you can't buy them, they only go to winners of Capture the Flag. 
So that's a special extra bonus for the CTF winners. And so with that, I'd like to give our eight badges to the winning team, PPP. Right, and as if that's not enough, on the back of this badge, there's another puzzle just for black badge winners to compete on. So. Last year, I announced a choice of architecture and rule set to see what teams could build with a year of preparation. While the game let us ask some interesting questions and get some interesting answers, we will be making some changes for 2017. We will be running a far more traditional Capture the Flag rule set with a twist. The 2017 DEF CON Capture the Flag will feature a custom processor architecture running on a custom operating system. We look forward to seeing everybody next year. <laughs> All right, uh, that is it for the uh, contest and events. Again, thanks uh, to everybody who put together a contest, a uh, village, an event, a party, the folks who spoke in the demo labs. And if you have things that, uh, that you're interested in putting out there, again, reach out to me, grifter at uh, defcon.org. Now, um, running all these events and doing all these things and having parties at night and villages and craziness and all these crowds can get fairly difficult. Um, there are a lot of you, and it's overwhelming uh, for my team. Uh, we can't control it all, uh, so we rely on the sock goons to help us do that. So um, we don't often get to hear from the sock goons. I think it'd be great if, uh, if we can get CJ up here to, uh, to tell us what went on this weekend. And while I still have somebody typing this stuff up on the, on the board, it's SOC sock. Um, I'm Crip, bitch. Hey, well, first of all, this is Tacitus. Tacitus is my second. He's the guy who actually does all the hard work. I mostly want to thank you lot. We had an unprecedented amount of attendees this year. We were not expecting to grow the way we did. And we also had an unprecedented low number of incidents. That's down to you guys. This was probably the safest conference I've ever run. There were a few issues. All of them got handled. You guys were super respectful to the hotel. You worked hard with the hotel. In fact, we got a thank you letter from Caesars calling out one of my guys and calling out an attendee for their help in taking down a jewel thief who was running through the conference. So, so I'd like to give a shout out to Hattori on my team and Nikki, the attendee, who, after being hit by the uh, jewel thief, managed to place her foot on his throat. <laughs> Don't mess with DEF CON attendees. There was one sort of unfortunate incident that I have to bring up. We had an attendee who got 86 from the Whiskey Pirates party. It really bummed me out because the guy was really not trying to be an asshole, but he was playing around putting stuff up that matched Caesar's equipment. And of course, when you poke the bear, the bear responds and Caesar's came down with about 30 security guards. They were super kind. They actually pulled back, reduced the numbers, agreed not to prosecute him. And we're in talks about fixing things so that he can come back so long as he doesn't do anything else like that. Um, <laughs> But the one thing that came out of it that I'd like to remind all of you guys is all of us in red shirts are here to help you. We're part of the community. We're not here to make money. We're, we're all volunteers. Help us help you. So if there's an incident and we're there and we're asking you questions, be upfront and honest. And if it's something you're nervous about talking about, take one of us to one side. We're on your side. But if you don't tell us upfront what happened, and they know something that we don't know, we're totally disabled at that point. 
we cannot help you. And that's what happened in this case. He wasn't clear with what was going on, and so we said it was one thing, and Caesars rolled out a whole bunch of data that showed it was another thing. And so we looked like fools. Uh, so help us help you. But other than that, it was a fantastic year. Uh, I've never worked this hard. We sold almost all of our badges by about 11 a.m. on Thursday. In fact, it's fair to say we did more badges between 6 a.m. and 11 a.m. on Thursday than we did through the entire conference last year. That's pretty Woo! impressive. Uh, When I got press ganged into taking this role, I, I woke up and there was a coin that said, you have to fucking do this. Um, we were seeing queue times of about four hours, and it was brutal. I mean, you guys know it. LineCon was a thing. This year, the average time, turnaround time for the line throughout the whole time it was open was 40 minutes. Uh, and the fastest time we clocked was 27 minutes. If someone had told me four years ago that we would have registration times of 20 minutes, I'd tell them they're an idiot. But we got there, and I hope we stay there. It's, it's much better to see you guys come out of the line happy, get straight into the conference, and enjoy it. So thank you for all the help you guys did, and in particular, thank you to all the other departments that made this work. Thank you to my team. I, the whole the registration experience was an entire team thing. Every department in DEF CON was involved in making that come together. And when it came together, it was beautiful. Thank you. Everything CJ said and more. <laughs> what he said. Where's my sock goons at? I want to thank you all. I was nervous stepping up into this role, but you made my life easy. You guys are awesome. I fucking love you guys. Thank you so much. Hi, DEF CON. Bye, DEF CON. OK, we're almost done, but we have a new special edition this year. So we have goons that have been supporting and making DEF CON happen for, I mean, for years, decades, literally decades. And just like we have a badge uh, for people who win contests, the black badge, this year we created an official badge uh, for goons. Goons that have served DEF CON for 10 or more years and have retired or are retiring this year. And for all their effort and energy they've put in, the new badge will allow them admission for life. Uh, as an acknowledgement of their dedication. And so we have... <laughs> we have a list of retiring gold badge... Uh, in the past, dating back as far as we can identify, to this year, we have a list of all the retired goons with 10 or more years. And since it'll take too long to bring them all up, if you're here and you're receiving a gold badge, please come up in the front and we'll get you your gold badge here on the side. And of course, we have to do some anti-counterfeiting maneuvers. But if we could acknowledge the dedication and the commitment of this team, I'd really appreciate it as we get them their gold badges. Thank you so much. Yeah. Zach, Zach, come on up if you're going to say anything. Yeah, I've invited Zach up to say a couple of words. He himself, having been retired 
um, has a unique insight. Okay, for almost 20 years, I've been ringmaster of this shit show that we call DEF CON. And the most important thing for me is I've watched this community grow from a bunch of teenagers that had, let's face it, no fucking control <laughs> to, to, to what we are today, right? And that is a big fucking deal, right? Blood code, a random little things created by Jason Strait for barcode, right? Generated more blood than the fucking, every fucking doctor's convention that rocked up in Vegas. They were shipping blood out of the state because they couldn't handle it in, in Nevada, right? That's us. And that's a big deal, right? So you need to understand that. We're fucking DEF CON! So if we can get all the, all the goons off to the side, you're going to have you sign the registry book, get you your gold badge, and, uh, and then see you at the party tonight, uh, the goon-only party, that you guys aren't invited to, because now we get to party. Now, it's with a little bit of regret I have to announce the retirement of an old friend, the smiley face DEF CON logo. Yes, the smiley face was created for DEF CON 20, and it was never intended to last more than a year. But through the love and care and feeding of, uh, of Zebler, it survived until 24 with duct tape and literal bailing wire. And it just, it could not, the, the way we store it, the desert heat, it's literally been disintegrating for years. Um, it just can't survive another year of coming up and down. So, what we're going to do is we're retiring the smiley today. It's going down. It's being shipped to a maker space. Its pieces are being cut into little pieces, into little mini smileys. And next year, we're going to hand out mini smileys, and we're going to replace it with the new smiley. So at DEF CON 25, our 25th anniversary next year, it'll be out with the old friend who will live on in mini smileys, and we'll be introducing our new friend. So, speaking of next year, how many of you remember DEF CON 1 when we all actually fit in this little VW bug? All right? <laughs> this is where we've been, right? This is the best. We had to do a new flow diagram since last year. I thought the flow this year was really fantastic. 22,000 people, and it didn't feel very crowded at times. I mean, at times, of course, crowded, but not nearly as bad as I thought it would be with 22,000. But with the 25th anniversary, we want to do something new and special. And uh, so we talked with, our, with the hotel, and we went over our options. And so next year, we're going to be at Caesar's Palace. Now, this is going to be really interesting because it's a stacked. We've got two floors on one side. Um, we've got the pool. We've got a lot of really cool stuff over there. We've got about 50,000 more square feet. And while that's not a whole lot of space now that we're so big, I mean, it's, it's some space. But what the best part is, a lot of it is modern, and we can put air walls everywhere. And so in, we can slice and dice the spaces, and we can better take care of some of these contests and events, and we can really try to create more intimate spaces uh, and experiences for you to interact with each other. So it's going to get us a lot of new stuff next year. And as usual, anytime we change hotels, we always want to hear from you. What do we do with the space? I really believed the first year we were going to come here, we had so much new space, I figured we'd have to close off half Paris and not use it because we weren't big enough. We've essentially outgrown the Paris and Bally's in two years. Unbelievable. So, with that said, 
all the video, all the packet captures, all the presentations, everything we can record, grab, capture, copy, will be online in the coming weeks and months. If you have any memories or files or evidence you want to share with us, we're happy to put it online. And with that said, I'm officially calling to a close DEF CON 24. See you next year.